Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs, and welcome to the $500 Vintage Snowmobile Challenge. Yeah! Let's get her going. We're not here for a music festival, are we? To set the stage for today's video, this story starts somewhere in a central Iowa shed surrounded by crappy old snowmobiles. All it took was one $600 marketplace ad to drag myself and all my friends straight down the vintage snowmobile rabbit hole. The next thing I know, all of my friends' yards look just like mine and are full of half-running crappy sleds. With that, we decide the ultimate move is a huge collaboration of YouTubers and $500 vintage snowmobiles in Chatech, Wisconsin. But an event like this doesn't just start that easy. In fact, on the first day, it quite literally didn't start. What seems to be the uh, the problem here, boys? Do you mean like on a grand scheme of things or just this? Don't run. Well, I mean, clearly there's something wrong with all of us. Hey, has, has this thing even popped once? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got one cylinder going. Eh, we'll see him in a bit. Holy crap. The whip. I love snowmobiles. Meanwhile, Phoenix. Dude, this is like the biggest flex ever. Just like, oh yeah, you're broken. Watch this. Meanwhile, yeah. <laughs> I just ride around. <laughs> Four minutes later, also broken. Over here, we have Angus's Bolins. It uh, blew the clutch clean off of it right away. So yeah, as you can tell, we're starting this video off with utter chaos, which is honestly pretty accurate for how any snowmobile trip starts. I think we're gonna take today to kind of sort things out, fix the sleds that already blew up, make a game plan, and tomorrow when it's 20, instead of five, we'll do some events. So, until then, I'm gonna set this inside because as you can see, it's froze. <laughs> Alrighty, it is time to get this shit show on the snow. Jack. Before you, we have a crack group of vintage sled enthusiasts, most of them have owned their sled for at least a few days, some of them a month. Enthusiasts is generous. <laughs> and in front of them, a cracked up group of vintage snowmobiles. So with that being said, we're actually gonna jump straight into the challenges. Gentlemen, start your engines. The first challenge of the day, as just said, is exactly that. We are going to start our engines. Everyone here starts with 100 points. The first pull is free. Every pull after that is a point off. Tell us about your sled, sir, and who the hell are you? Uh, hi, I'm Angus. I come here sometimes. This is my Yamaha Enticer. It's a 78, maybe, 340. It's not all that special. It's been used. Well, let's see what you got. You're at 100 points right now. First one's free, right? Yep. Okay. Oh! Retains 100 points, setting the bar high. I should mention if it starts, it obviously that pull doesn't count. Yeah, in case anyone was confused. I think I'll go next. This is my 1970 something enticer that I bought for 400 bucks off Facebook Marketplace and fixed up for this event. No kill switch, so we don't have to worry about turning that on. I uh, got this 19 something Jag. It's been one of the most reliable sleds here this weekend. Uh, although it no. doesn't like to do cold starts, so this will be interesting. Hey! All right. This is going all too well. Oh, Shut up. <laughs> You're next, Phoenix. It's definitely not going to start now. Okay, 1979. John Deere 340 Trail Fire. Next in line, Dalton, Pull Barn Garage. What's up, bro? You've got, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a 1980 Yamaha Enticer, bro. 
and uh, it's actually been like super good but that means it's not going to run today Ethan, what have you brought that's not down here right now? Uh, ND 500. <laughs> I think it might have blew up, but that's a, that's a problem for later. <laughs> you are on one of the other Jags I brought along. Yeah. This one was rolled in a ditch five times and then sat in a barn for three years. A guy sold it to me for 150 bucks. I sprayed some brake clean at it and it fired up and that's all we've done. I'm missing a couple pieces, but it just adds to the character. His chokes some, broke off. He's gotta get, some help gotta get a hand. He had two people help him. That that counts as I am missing. Not, that's no. not my problem, sir. This is a serious competition. That is competition. not your problem. I, this is my problem. I'm putting a claim on him. Next up, John and Ike from Cars and Cameras. Are we yeah. showing them the Scorpion Whip? Yeah, I think you should try to start it. Let's do it. All right. So this is uh, this is Kevin's '74 Scorpion Whip. Um, Scorpion went out of business a number of years ago. All right. They don't make snowmobiles anymore. But honestly, I don't think any of these people should make snowmobiles anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we got this thing running, and while we were tuning it yesterday and hooning it... Video uh, on their channel. Yeah, uh, we had a little bit of a mishap, but we're going to try the uh, cold start anyways. We have electric start. Yes, we're going to give that a shot. Come on! It's not going well, is it? I thought about it. <laughs> This was the sound of Thursday. <laughs> All day. Yeah. Well, I think we should go to the bar an hour later. Right? We'll come back later yeah, for that. <laughs> Moral of the story, they have a snowmobile that they fixed on their channel, and you guys can check it out on Cars and Cameras. Um, it was awesome for 10 minutes. It was. Like you said, the track blowed up, so it is dead. John, what are you riding this weekend? I reckon I'm riding an enticer as well. <laughs> Just choke on all the way? I think so. No, it's not. One more. Oh, it's not. Oh. There we go. There we go. All right. Another one has joined the fray. Ike on the Jag 2000. Two pulls. Two pulls. So that's four. Right? Hey! Two pulls! Yeah. Do, they, do they count as half pulls because it's only half a recoil? Oh, yeah. Gold and rust or bust here in the flesh. What have you brought? This is my free 1979 Cobra 440. Hell yeah. I had a video on on my channel. Think she's going fire? We'll see. <laughs> I got faith in the old girl. If not, you're going to be put up for adoption. Well done, sir. Thank you. Ezra. Hi. My buddy from Minnesota. What have you brought? Uh, this was a 1971 Polaris Mustang. Your first vintage sled. Yeah, I just Kevin actually got me down the vintage sled rabbit hole, and uh, <laughs> I think I put maybe five miles on it before loading on the trailer. And let's see her come to life. Am I allowed to blow in the gas tank? I think I got a weak fuel pump. He's got to blow this sled. Giving it a good blowy. Now I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> My throttle sticks a little bit every now and again. So Ezra, Ethan, and Angus retain full points as we move into the next challenge. Two things were just brought up. There should probably be points for vintage apparel. Yes. Phoenix has a fantastic John Deere trail fire suit. So my sled's supposed to be silver with these logos. <laughs> it's supposed to match. But, but somebody painted the hood green. <laughs> Ezra's got is himself it, a sweet... New? 
Polaris jet. I think that's still counts. That's a good idea. For Angus, another excellent vintage suit. The Red Rocket himself. <laughs> wow, I didn't like that. Not even a little. Yeah. Oh, that is a unit right there. Give her a spin. Yes. I think that's worth some points. Dalton's hiding one over here. Oh. <laughs> That's worth some points for sure. Of course, my eBay special. I'm quite proud of a few specific patches on this. Do you want to smell my armpit? No. <laughs> smell you from here, bud. But the other thing that you may get points for this weekend, gentlemen, is if you sell your sled and don't have to take it home. With that being said, John actually brought this one up as a contender and it didn't quite work out. So he's going to be selling it this weekend. There's a guy on the way right now. Okay. Money changing hands. You guys ready for some drag racing? Yeah! We've got all these sleds lined up. We have ourselves a set of cones for a finish line and a set of cones for a turnaround point. The great equalizer, the ability to turn and go straight. We're gonna do a king of the hill style starting with the slowest sleds we think we have and work our way up to the fastest sleds we think we have. So, with that being said, who is up first? What, I'm thinking. Mustang? Yeah, she's pretty slow. I can like almost walk that fast. Gentlemen, do the starting line. All right, starting things off. Ezra on the Mustang and Aaron on the Jag 3000. Woo! Both of them, all right. Mustang wins. You keep going. Second race. Ezra on the Mustang. John on the black enticer that's weak on one cylinder. You ready? You ready? Go! Oh, it's close. Oh. Oh, Enticer! Oh. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Third race, Phoenix on the trail fire. John on the Enticer. Phoenix about destroying that tree. <laughs> Whoa! I think the Yamaha might have took him on that. Yeah. I don't know. I think the snowbank about took him off of it. <laughs> Probably me. The race is light up on the line. Are you ready? Go! Yamaha took it by a nose. Great trained him. In this bout we have Yamaha Tyson versus Artan Dev. It's a close one. Uh, I don't 
know who's next, but I'm gonna go. Okay. Hey, you're uh, you're killing it out there, buddy. Yeah, we might have put this one in a little right. early. Yeah. I was anticipating it. The long track might get a little more grip, but I think I'm just killing every one of the turns. You have a better lane? No, I've got them both. They both suck. <laughs> well, here's Isaac. Another go. I, do you want to switch lanes? I'll give you priority. I'll, I'll keep the same lane. Okay. Check him out to make sure he didn't switch the engine on. Check me for steroids. Is this, is this thing stuck? I'll show you, son. Stop, then the left side. The first one's coming off. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm cheating. I'm very mad at you. He caught me in this ball, right? Enticer and enticer. Are you ready, sir? It's almost like he knows which one's the fastest. Yeah, yeah. he's been I think he juicing. Gave heads and the shit out of it and... We need to get a drug test. <laughs> yeah, I want a fuel yeah. sample. I'm gonna go pour a little extra oil in that tank. <laughs> <laughs> he might, he might have uh, some some additives like uh, nitroglycerin, nitroglycerin in the oil or something. I was told by an old man if you put nitroglycerin in oil, you get the bang down and you get the bang back up. <laughs> the old man was serious too. Oh yeah. So the enticer beat everything else, and now it's going up against the 600 trip, our tow rig. Yeah, it was closer than we thought. That's all it takes to beat a 340 enticer, a 600 triple. That's it. That's all you need. Does anyone feel their sled did not run right or something, and they did not get a good, clean try? Let me let me get the 440. I yeah. know I got you. So now we have the Isaac rematch. Oh, oh, oh. I know what's going to happen. tried our best. <laughs> Cheating's winning. You can't kill those who don't have a kill switch. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Vintage crappy enticer wins again. I would like to see someone with talent ride by. Like, I think the little blue enticer could take it. My blue enticer against Kevin on the red, 340. 
We put a skilled rider on it. Oh, oh, no. oh no! No, my skilled rider, he failed me. Come on, come on! Oh. After the drag race, we took a break to enjoy some of the festivities Shatex Winterfest has to offer. We watched the bikini runs, met a bunch of local fans, and got some seat time with the ice racers. This was an awesome experience, so a huge thanks goes out to Jarrett and all the guys involved with the ice races. After having some fun at Winterfest, we went back to the cabin to carry on with the madness. I don't see any spark. Jags are dropping like flies not suddenly. Not What's going on over here? Don't run. This one needs a head gasket. <laughs> Just a little. Just well, tighten the bolts up a little bit. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be good enough. Should be okay. <laughs> we didn't even... Wow. <laughs> 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 any sparky? Okay, let me turn it the other way to run. Nothing. Oh boy, the drill is out. Yeah, I, I, I lost a, a cleat. So uh, she's no longer attached to my track. Oh, that's, so, that's 15 points off. Oh, I'm going to see if I can drill a hole and throw a couple bolts through and replace <laughs> the rivets with bolts. I'm still in this. She's running like a champion. Cool. Just a little update halfway through our day here. How is the enticer? It's all or nothing. With well, one. the seat no is still comfortable. <laughs> uh, the wax job is holding up well. Uh, that's all I got. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> My seat, um, I might need to hire you on that one. It's just a Maha anymore. <laughs> it's just a Maha. The John Deere holding together? Yep, it's going good. Fuel cap's leaking a little bit, but other than that. Oh, that's, that's safety. That's six points off. Hasn't started on fire yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> this Jag? Doing good. Had a little trouble with it starting. Uh, turns out the ignition switch was off. I'm gonna leave a Google review after this weekend. Whoever runs this rental company just I know. safety standards are not up to. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean there? Kill switch worked great. <laughs> I see another sled in the dead sled pile. Yeah. What happened? No spark, spark. The Jag lost spark. Yeah. You What'd know. you say this morning about it being the most reliable here? Yeah, you know, it was reliable till it wasn't. It is time now for our third event, the Oval Track. Gentlemen, to choose our heats, we're gonna do it the easiest, most fair way possible. We're gonna settle this like men, rock, paper, scissors. Uh, everyone at once. Everyone pick a partner. Actually, hopefully lose five people lose here. and they're in the second heat. Wait, yeah. hold on, how do we uh, win? That's a good question. How do Whoever all picks the same thing Yeah, because right? the paper. Oh, that Majority doesn't make wins. any sense. That make any. I, still think, I, think, I still think if you just pick two people, whoever you pick wins, two people, <laughs> you know, and whoever loses goes in the second one. If yep. you have a helmet on, you're in the first heat, plus him and John. Done. I have to go grab my helmet. Let's do it. There. I watch. Uh, bingo. Race number one, we have Isaac on the Jag, Phoenix on the gear, Angus on the Enticer, John on the Polaris 440. Oh, well, they were supposed to be five. There we go. Alrighty, race fans, let's get the oval races rolling on our $500 snowmobile challenge. For heat one, we have Ike, followed by Phoenix, John, Angus, and bringing up the rear in the partially injured enticer is Aaron. The green flag drops, and these guys crack the throttle open, heading into turn one and two. Right now, the track has a lot of snow on it, so heat one should see some good racing. On board with Angus now as we head into turns three and four on the first lap. Phoenix goes way wide, and we head across the line. One lap done, four to go. Back into turns one and two, Ike hard on the throttle, trying to hold off that John Deere Phoenix. This is his first weekend ever riding a snowmobile, and he is out here absolutely wheeling this thing, or skiing this thing. Lap three, and there's still no change of position. John in the back having some issues with no brakes on that 440 Cobra. Into turn three, on board with Angus. Now, oh, it looks like it's getting a little slippery out there as that initial layer of snow on the track is getting pushed aside and more ice is getting uncovered. Into turns one and two now, pushing their sleds, looking for any advantage to get around and make a pass. On oh, and Phoenix spins it. Angus takes advantage and goes around him on the outside, securing second place for the final lap. Ike still leading this race on a 275cc sled with a bad head gasket. Behind him, Angus and John. And Phoenix in the back goes way wide, giving Aaron on the injured enticer a chance to catch up. Final turn now, Ike and Angus, a drag race to the finish line, and Ike takes the checkered flag. 
Got the W. Now the uh, racers in heat two are just doing a little bit of track maintenance and they're gonna be off for five more laps. Literally can't come up with a fifth snowmobile for this race. <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, there's one with the headlight on. He's good to go. Yeah, the enticer. Get him rolling. I'm, a, I'm doing it on the rotary. For heat two, we have Ezra on the Mustang, Kevin on the Rotary Arctic Cat, Ethan on the Barn Fine Jag, Dalton on the 300 Enticer, and Ike on the 340 Lawn Track, because why not? The green flag drops, and they are off like a shot, headed into turn one and two. Kevin and Ezra battling it out on sleds 10 years older than anything else on the field as they head into turns three and four, still neck and neck. Coming on to the front straight now, Ethan looking to get on that inside corner of Ezra, as Kevin trying to take the outside line around him. They both see an opportunity, and we go three wide down the back straight into turn three. Three into four now, Kevin and Ethan finally get the pass on Ezra. Honestly, it's very impressive he's held onto the lead this long. That sled is significantly slower than the rest. Quite the opposite, the jag down the back straight really starting to show what these sleds are good at. Ike on the 340, way wide coming into three and four. And behind him, bringing up the rear, Dalton on the 300. Ethan is moving on that thing. Kevin's rotary punching above its weight. Oh, and he's off. Kevin loops it into three and face plants straight into the snow. As you can see, that layer of snow on top of the ice we were talking about is starting to get worn away, and this track is going to get slipperier and slipperier on the inside line. Let's get these guys restacked and restarted for the last two laps. The green flag drops and they're at it again, battling ski to ski into the first turn. Out of turn two onto the back stretch, Ethan in the lead, Dalton and Isaac go wide, and Kevin and Ezra battle it out on the inside with their much older sleds. Out of turn four, down the front straight, Kevin looking to make up the time lost in his rollover. He sneaks by on the front straight as they head into turn one and two, trying to get around Ezra, who is up on one ski. The whole field goes wide. Look out, cameraman. Three wide, wide open, down into turn three. Absolutely pushing these old sleds past their limit. Oh, and Dalton spills the beans. No doubt, knowing how old and brittle he is, we'll have to send him to the infield clinic to get checked out. <laughs> Well, it looks like he's okay, which means the race can continue with one lap left. The green flag drops and they are off for the final lap, heading into turn one and two. Kevin looking to get around Ezra, taps him with his ski, oh, tips him up. He saves it though, looks like he's gonna jump back on. They're gonna keep it green as Ethan takes the checker. But it's not over, turn three and four, a drag race for second place. Kevin and Ike onto the straight and it's Kevin in the rotary by a nose. And there's the checkered flag. Congratulations, sir. Man, what a time that was. That's heat one and two. Time for us to take way too long to figure out who won what and then move on to the final. The track's pretty much done for us, so the final's gonna be a slippery shit show. Not that this whole weekend hasn't been. Here's your lineup. Angus on the Enticer, Ethan on the Jag, Kevin the Rotary, Ike the Long Track, and John his Cobra 440. Get my glove off to count, you know. <laughs> Eight laps, I gotta use the other one. Uh -huh. The green flag is out and our pile of vintage idiots head into turns one and two. Ethan has a close call as he races Angus down the back straight into turn three and four. Angus going wide, Ethan taking the inner line. It looks like it's Ethan onto the front straight. In the rear, a battle between Ike and Kevin for fourth place. On board with Angus now as he tries to reel Ethan in on the back straight. He makes up a little ground at the turn, but it's just not enough to get the job done. In the back, John on that beautiful 440 battling Kevin for third. Turns one and two now, Ike taps Kevin, he gets loose and spins it, giving the other two an opportunity to sneak around. Back in the front, Angus still desperately trying to reel Ethan in, but it looks like he is losing ground. John battling Ike for third, keep in mind there are still no brakes on that 440 Cobra. Into turns one and two, Kevin has been playing catch up and it looks to be paying off. He slips past John and sets his sights for Ike in third place. Almost a full lap ahead now, Ethan is relentlessly on the throttle of that Jag, followed by Angus on his enticer. Behind him, Kevin now nipping at the heels of Ike and oh, John gets into the deep stuff and puts her up on one ski. Turn one and two, Kevin looking for the inside line on Ike gets snagged by the ice again and loops it in turn two. John tries to sneak behind the outside but Kevin takes advantage of the torque on the rotor and ooh, contact! 
Coming into turn four. Looks like he did say sorry, though, so I guess that's nice. Either way, right behind them, Ethan in first with a huge gap over Angus in second place. Ethan has truly become one with that machine, and it shows. Out of turns four now, Angus and Ike, followed by Kevin on the rotary and John in his Polaris. Turn three gets the best of John one last time as Ethan slips around and laps him to take the checkered flag. A good while later, Angus out of turn four, followed by Ike and Kevin once again drag racing to the line, and this time it's Ike by a whole sled. Ethan is the winner! This might not have been the correct option for a sled, but damn. If it ain't got style. If it ain't got style. All right, so that's the oval race done. Congratulations, Ethan, our first place winner yeah. on the Jag, the sled that was rolled, probably doing this, and then sitting in a barn for a number of years. With that, I think everyone can agree it is time to move on to the cargo challenge. How many beer cans can you fit in your sled? Lead. Who wants to go first? Nose goes. Oh, I I'll touched go. my nose, but it... Yeah, I'll go first. First up, my enticer. First spot I got on this. I don't really have any tools in the tool box because it's, it's a Yamaha. What do you need those for? Except for helping your friends. You can just leave them behind. We have friends. Exactly. Looks like three beers in there. And you can pack some ice in there. You Well, done. <laughs> you just drive. The hidden advantage that this will have over the other enticers. It looks like you've done that before. Nope. <laughs> I think they knew what they designed it for, though. So I can comfortably, without overflowing, fit 33 beers in this sled. Wow. I think I set our bar pretty high. Let's see who can beat it. All right. I have the same, uh, same tool compartment, but mine is full of tools, so... Uh, Oh, wait. You know, I might fit two. We need two more beers. I can fit two more. Uh, three. three. Comfortably. Really? Second place. <laughs> nice job. I think I can fit 10 or 15. 10 or 15? In that center council. Oh, let's go check out the John Deere. There's no way. Yeah. One. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But you can't oh, steer. You can't steer. Uh, no. No, I can go don't. left. Nope. <laughs> that means he's just gotta go straight home. Disqualified. All right, uh, All right let me stack them in there. <laughs> oh, wait, the no, door can't close. That's a no right there. No. Uh, 13, man. 13. Oh, nope. Oh, Hang on. Take him out. Take him out. Oh. 12. 12 pack. That was definitely not coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> Second place goes to Phoenix. 12 beers. John, you think you can top that? Is that a $100 bill? Doesn't look real. Is that another 100 points for John? <laughs> I think that's real. Let me see. A uh, motion picture money yeah, it's, only. It's no. not real. 100 points off. Yeah. <laughs> 11. Can I get one more? Oh, oh, oh. oh, I think you can do There's it. There's a frosty one for you. It's slipperier. 12. Oh. 13. 13. Oh. 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 The closest race all day. <laughs> Man, we could haul a lot of beer so far. <laughs> Who's next? The Jags. Let's go check out one of the Jags. Yeah, let me get the hood open here real quick. It's just a possible to find paper on MTV Cribs. You got three in there, hey. comfortably. Hey, hey, not last. You're just tied for it. Oh. Ezra. I'm your competition, Kevin. Oh, boy. Let's see how many beers you can fit. I think Polaris was really thinking when they designed this lead. I think they were drinking when they designed it. <laughs> they, they saw a Coleman cooler there and like, what What do you say we put some tracks under there and some skis on the front? We'll call her a snowmobile. It's actually a good idea. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Next week on Cars and Cameras. <laughs> when everybody else was being interviewed on how many beers they could fit, I went ahead and threw all of my tools out of the sled because when I break down, I'd rather be able to sit on my snowmobile, think Holy about shit. it, and have a nice sip of beer instead of actually worrying about <laughs> fixing it. So I said to hell with all that. And I opened up my cooler and I said, you know, let's just start stacking them in there. We might as well just do the math. <laughs> Uh, well, no, we got to test because I want to know for sure, too. I don't think we have that much beer. Well, we're going to figure out what we're <laughs> 29, 30. But he's not done. Yeah. He but wait, him, there's right? more. Oh, no. Oh, no. We don't talk about it yet. 
think I just found a new model favorite for snowmobile. Absolutely. Yeah. 71 Polaris this Mustang. Is, this might be the only thing it wins this week. <laughs> what? Put them back in the box. You can put 30 beers in there and put all your tools back in. Oh, oh. shoot. Oh, oh man. we're onto something oh, now. No. Oh, yes. Oh. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, what, I'm not winning. What do I care? <laughs> so there's, there's another six over there. Yes. There we go. Oh That's my gosh. Okay, how many is that? So 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 30, 4, 12, 9. 8 and 6, 3. I got two, lost. 37. Thanks, everybody. All right. Start yelling so, numbers. 37. 37. Hold on. But seat. wait, there's more. Oh, oh my God. It's awesome, buddy. Oh, my God. We're running out of bears. <laughs> we need, I just we need reinforcements. It. Here's a 6, 7, I? 8. Are there any cores? <laughs> These ones are a little tall. If this doesn't get sponsored by Bush Light or Cores, I'm too. So, we got 15. 15 in the front, and we got 37 in the back for 52. a grand total of 52. 52. Is that all? Well, Ezra, you won your first challenge Thanks, today. Thanks. Polaris gets some points. I'm, I'm excited to actually, show off this feature. This is actually a great segue and to talk about something that a company sent me that I think you guys are all gonna love. I'll be right back. Ezra took the trophy for the cargo competition fitting 52 beers inside of his sled. But I think I have a solution for taking home the trophy for fitting the most beers in your pants. Ladies and gentlemen, these right here are the muff waders, which have a built-in cooler, insulated six-pack cooler in the front of your pants. What's more is they come with a koozie that lets you go hands-free, and that doubles as a can opener. Not looking to wear any pants today? No problem. What? If Damn, you're not right, supposed right to right wear pants, how, where are the suspenders attached to? <laughs> Don't ask. The muff waders suspenders have got you covered. Best part of all though, beyond the fact that these are made out of an awesome durable canvas material, is the fact that these were designed by two dudes out of Holstein, Iowa. That's right, leave it to the Iowans to design beer pants. If you want to check out a pair of these for yourself, they are surprisingly affordable. You can get them on muffwaiters.com. With that, it brings my total up to 40 beers on the snowmobile. I'm going to go ahead and say that's cheating. Last event of the day. Anyone? First one of the yeah. bars, rot day. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Specifically the first, and also the seventh. It is time for an endurance trek all the way across the Great Lake of Chatek to the closest bar. You know, one thing we didn't even consider, these are like up armored pants in a bar fight. You've got a six, first of all, it looks like a six pack you're rocking. Yeah. Second of all, it is a six pack you're rocking, and you're, you got out like an armor plate up front. I've wet myself. I got a bit of a drinking problem. As you can see, the sun is going down. It is the end of the day for our $500 snowmobile challenge. With that, it is time to start one of the toughest challenges of all. The endurance ride all the way across Lake Chatek to the closest bar right over there. We're burning light, so there's nothing better to say right now than on your marks, get set, go. Yeah. <laughs> test is going great um you can still see the cabin i don't think we've even made it halfway to the bar <laughs> i think we broke two sleds
You okay? Yeah. Give me a second. Yep. Uh, Dalton, welcome to the bar. Uh, welcome to lose. Uh, what? Huh? You know Where what? I'm going to give you the endurance challenge award. <laughs> Yay! Oh, my legs. Your sled was flawless all weekend long, and you sent it right to the end. You betcha. Finally had a failure. Operator error. <laughs> Let's go drink some beers. I need some now. Well. Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. We completed our $500 snowmobile challenge by riding these things, racing these things, wrecking these things, and making it all the way to the bar. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Big thanks to all these guys for dealing with my bullshit, bossing them around all weekend so we can get the right shots to make this happen. This was an extremely difficult video because if you know anything about snowmobiles, just trying to ride them normally is pretty much impossible. It's honestly a miracle we pulled this off. So huge thanks to all them for the help all weekend. And of course, thanks to the awesome town of Chatech, Wisconsin and all of their Winterfest activities for allowing us to come out here and have some fun on their lake. I think the winners are those who don't own snowmobiles. <laughs> Snowmobiles. For Disregard sale. snowmobiles. <laughs> Disregard <laughs> snowmobiles. Everybody on three. I love, I love snowmobiles. snowmobiles. Some different opinions in the crowd, but I think you guys get it nonetheless. Thank you for joining us for this episode. I think it is time I open a tab and buy you all some well-deserved drinks. We think that's right. good. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah. I'm game. Right. We'll see you guys next time. I'm bleeding. Peace. Oh. Anal, Anal enticer. Anal jag. Yeah. Anal twin special. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh, oh. oh. they can do that. The anal, anal invader. Anal charger. <laughs> Ooh, Yamaha made an anal exciter and an anal inviter. Anal. Oh boy. What's the anal whip? <laughs> the anal, whip. The anal trail fire. <laughs> anal liquefier. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's just oh. like Taco Bell. Oh. It's not funny anymore. I'm hungry. All right, let's go in. Um.